Number one, let's seek meekness. Seek meekness. Go to the book of Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter number two there in the Minor Prophets, Zephaniah. And then we're going to read chapter two, verse number three. Zephaniah chapter number two and verse number three. Now we need to seek meekness. Meekness. Can't say it today. Seek meekness today. Now, the Bible says in Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 3, Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness. And what are the next two words? Seek what? Meekness. meekness. Seek meekness. You and I need to be seeking meekness today. Now, once again, the world says, Be bold, be strong. God's word says, Be meek. Seek meekness. What is meekness? Strength under what? Control. Control. Now, meekness can be obtained through the Holy Spirit today. Psalms chapter 25, verse number 9 says, The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. Did you hear that? He will teach his way. So how can we learn, how can we obtain this meekness that God desires of us to have? Well, we can get it through the Holy Spirit, but we need to seek for him to teach us his way. Hey, when was the last time you went to the Lord in prayer? Lord, please teach me to be meek. Teach me to be meek. Now, uh, we, we, we want to be bold. We, Lord, please help me to be strong today. Lord, help me to be bold. And, uh, but when was the last time we said, Lord, teach me to be meek? Strength under control. We need to ask the Lord to teach us his ways. By the way, we can't do it because naturally we're not meek. We're very proud. But we need to ask the Lord to teach us his ways. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Remember, we've talking about we've been talking about this a lot lately. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, there will be meekness within your life, and this meekness will make such a difference in your relationships. Hey, if you're fighting with your spouse, if you're arguing with your kids, if you're having uh, 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 problems with authorities at your work and problems with your colleagues and you can't seem to get along with anybody, then maybe you need the fruit of meekness today. We all need meekness in our life. We need to be seeking meekness in our life. Why? Because it will give us a better relationship with everyone. This will help you to experience fulfillment and satisfaction as God supplies your needs. The problem with, the, the problem with it is, uh, not the problem with meekness, but the problem is we are proud and we want things our way instead of being meek and allowing God to give us what we need. We want it my way, right? Instead of saying, Lord, what is it desire, or what do you desire that I have? Meekness will help you in all the relationships of your life. You know what meekness can be found in? Meekness can be found in the yoke of Jesus. Turn to Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Matthew chapter 11, verse number 28. Matthew 11, verse 28. Matthew 11, verse 28. Matthew 11, verse 28. The Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And then he says in verse 29, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Hey, folks, you know what we need to do? We need to find meekness in the yoke of Jesus. As we go to Jesus, we have to humble ourselves and get under the yoke of Jesus. Now, what, what, what is a yoke? A yoke is something that you would see oftentimes on a farm or in a field. And a yoke would be something maybe made out of wood, old days, maybe made out of iron. And it would join one beast of burden, maybe an ox, maybe a donkey, maybe a horse. And it would put two animals together 
And what was the purpose of putting together? So that they could work together to do a particular, maybe plowing a field, maybe doing, uh, a, a, I don't know, I'm not a farmer, whatever you don't you do with uh, one of them thingy-majiggies, right? <laughs> but most often it would be like plowing a field. Now that yoke would be placed upon two. Now, can you imagine if you have two animals there that don't want to work together? Or one wants to get out of the yoke and go this way, and the other one wants to go that way? Hey, in order for, be, for it to be productive, they've got to be working together. Now what we have to do is say, you know what, Lord? I desire to be meek like you. So I'm going to humble myself, and I'm going to not do my will and my way, but I'm going to get in the yoke with you, Lord, and I'm going to allow you to teach me to be meek. Teach me to be meek. When we humble ourselves by meekness and recognize that we can do nothing without the help of God, then we enter the yoke of Jesus, and guess what happens? Our burden becomes lighter. <laughs> you know when we struggle with life, when we try to do things ourselves, all by myself, I can do it all by myself. You know what? Why don't we get in the yoke with Jesus and make the work that we do for him lighter? But oftentimes we try to do it in our own flesh and in our own strength, and we quickly find out that we're not as strong as we thought we were. But the Lord has to humble us sometimes and we get in the yoke with Jesus and say, hey, God's work done God's way is so productive when we are meek and lowly. Now listen, the Lord does, praises those that are, are meek. In fact, look at Matthew 5, 5. Go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 5. The Lord said, hey, uh, there are some people here that uh, are blessed. The Bible says in Matthew 5, 5, he says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. He was going on to the Beatitudes here in Matthew 5. He's going on to say all these things are blessed. He said, you know who are the blessed people? Those that are meek. We think the blessed people are those that are strong and mighty. But the Lord says, no, the blessed are those that are meek and lowly and humble and that have strength under control. Those are those that the Lord praises and blesses. Seek me meekness today. Hey, Christian, how about you? Are you seeking meekness today? Are you here today to say, tell me how I can be stronger, Pastor? Tell me how I can be bolder in the Christian life. Hey, you know how we go up? <laughs> by going down. Right. Whoa, you mean I go up by going down? Absolutely. The way that you go up is by humbling yourself. Amen. What is humbling yourself? So that's bringing yourself down. Saying, Lord, I can't do it on my own. I'm humbling myself before you. And the Lord says, guess what? I will lift you up. I'll lift you up. And I would much rather God lift me up than I lift me up. Amen. I can't even lift Amen. my own self. <laughs> but God can lift me. Amen? Amen. Why are y'all laughing? <laughs> but God can lift me. And by the way, he can lift you much higher than you ever thought you could go. If you're meek today. Amen. Seek meekness today. Now, number two, let's identify meekness. Let's identify. How can we know that we are walking in meekness or not? You say, Pastor, how can I know this? I want to be able to identify it. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2. Go there. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 2. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 2. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 2. You guys are listening so good today. If I had a dollar, I'd give it away today. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 2. How can we know that we are walking in meekness or not? Ephesians 4, 2 says, With all lowliness and meekness, with longsuffering, forbearing one another in love. Number one, meekness will cause us to respond properly in difficult situations. Have you ever responded improperly in a difficult situation? Yes. Maybe a stressful time at work with you and a colleague, and you told them what you thought. <laughs> Not always smart. Uh, hey, husband, wife, have you ever had a difficult situation at home, and you told them what you thought? And you and the dog slept with each other that night. 
or the couch became your new bed. <laughs> Folks, you are going to get yourself in so much trouble with one another if you don't learn to be meek. Amen. Blessed are the meek. <laughs> I think the Lord was trying to tell us something right here. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Meekness will cause us to respond properly in difficult situa situations. We cannot control other people's actions. Did you hear that? If you'll just get that in your head right now. I cannot control other people's actions. You can't do it, folks. But we can control our responses. Did you hear that? Yeah. You're not going to be able to control your wife. <laughs> You're not going to be able to control your husband. You're not going to be able to control your kids all the time. You're not going to be able to control your boss or your coworkers. But you can control your responses good. with meekness. The question is, are you doing so with a spirit of meekness or not? Titus chapter 3. Let's look at Titus chapter 3. I want to give you a lot of scripture today. Titus chapter 3. And let's look at verse number 1. Titus chapter 3, verse number 1. We can respond properly to those difficult situations with our spouse, with the person we're driving down the road with, the person in the supermarket, with all those interactions, we can respond properly if we'll be meek today. Meek today. Are you there, Titus chapter 3, verse 1? The Bible says, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready uh, uh, to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. <laughs> we would rather just put our dukes up and fight it out, right? That's kind of most of our mentality. I'm an Irishman, so I know exactly how that feels, you know? That Irish spirit comes out in me. Let's fight it out then, huh? But meekness says, uh-uh, that's not the proper way to respond. Be gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. Verse 3, for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Verse 4, but after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man, appeared. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us uh, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Verse six, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our savior. The Lord said, I am not going to respond to you based upon how you are treating me, but I am going to respond to you with love and mercy and gentleness and meekness. Yeah. And because of his love and mercy, he died for us on the cross and showed us his righteousness that we too can be meek like God. You know what we need to do? We need to treat others the way that Jesus Christ treated us. Yeah. We go, they don't deserve it. Look how they talk to me. Look how they're treating me. Do you think Jesus ever felt that way while he was here on this earth? When he was going to Calvary, do you ever think for a moment that people talked to him inappropriately? Do you think people ever treated him wrongly? Absolutely. The Bible gives us testimony of all the evil things that people did to him. Yet, what did he do? He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And he loved them with the spirit of meekness. Folks, you need that spirit today. Hey, there's going to be some people that talk wrongly about you, that go behind your back, that say and do evil things to you, but with the spirit of meekness is how you need to respond. Once again, you cannot control other people. 
but you can control your responses. Amen. And that's exactly what Jesus showed here. With the spirit of meekness, he showed us how we can respond to those things that are done to us that are improper and wrong. Our flesh desires to respond with vengeance, but a spirit of meekness causes us to turn the other cheek and to pray for our enemies. That's what God desires of you today. So we said meekness will cause us to respond properly in difficult situations. Next, meekness will cause us to respond properly in our homes. Woo, we need that, don't we? Hey, turn to 1 Peter chapter number 3. 1 Peter chapter number 3. 1 Peter chapter number 3. Meekness will cause us to respond properly in our homes. Listen, husbands and wives, they need to learn how to properly respond to one another. You know, one of the key issues and problems in a marriage that comes up probably more than any other time when there's marriage counseling is communication. Communication. And often the problem is, is men, you cannot think like a woman. Right. <laughs> And the problem is, is women, you can't think like men. And because of that, we don't always communicate properly. Because we don't communicate properly, we have problems, right? We have problems. We have friction that starts to form in our marriages. And if we don't respond in a spirit of meekness, oh my goodness, we're going to have problems, 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 problems. Now, what does the Bible tell us that we can do to respond with meekness? In 1 Peter chapter 3, it gives us examples of how we can exercise this kind of meekness. The Bible says in verse number 1, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair and wearing of gold or of putting on a, of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Hey, I guarantee if you pick up the next issue of Glamour Magazine, you're not going to have that on what women should act like these days. That's not what the world thinks is popular for women today. But the Bible says, hey, in God's eyes, it's a great price. It's a great price. It's an ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit. Verse 5, for after this manner in the old time, the old women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Now, women, God wants you to be in subjection to your husband. Listen, in God's order, now, I don't like it, Pastor. Take it up with God. I'm sorry, all right? You shouldn't have ate the fruit, all right? <laughs> But in God's order, in God's order, God has placed man under him and under man, woman, and under women, the children, to be in subjection to the parents. Amen. All right? You say, well, that's, that's just not popular today, Pastor. That's just, not, that's just not what we're doing. We're trying to have women empowerment, right? We've been working for this for years, women empowerment. Listen, once again, the way women are going to go up in society is by going down. What? Did you hear that? The way you're going to go up is go Whoa, so you mean if I'm meek and lowly and have a meek and quiet spirit, then I'll go up? Absolutely. God promises it. It's his word. Now the Bible says they're being subjection to their husbands and to honor their husbands. Now, the Bible goes on to say here in verse number seven, in case you men think you're out of it, all right, verse seven. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge and giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel 
and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Now, that word honor unto the wife is to show respect, reverence, and preference. Amen. So, wait a second. The wife is to show preference to the husband, and the husband is to show preference to the wife? Wait a second. Who's in charge here? God is. Amen. God is. Sure. You know, sometimes men, they go, God's word says I am the leader of this home. What you're really saying is I'm the dictator of this home. Huh? God has called men to be the spiritual leaders of the home. The spiritual leaders of the home. But you know, sadly today, I was talking to my men's class this morning. I think if we were to take a survey of the average Christian home, that there are probably more spiritual leaders with women in the home than men. So whose fault is that? I believe it's the men's fault. You are to be the spiritual leaders of the home, men. Lead by example. Well, do as I say, not as I do. Uh-uh, doesn't work that way. Hey, if we're going to be yielded to God, then we are to be in subjection to one another. Yielded to one another. Uh, you've seen this illustration before, but take a triangle here. And we've got God right here. We have the husband right here and the wife right here. As we get closer to God and doing what God wants us to do for our life, what are we doing? We're getting closer and closer in our marriage and in our relationship. The problem is, is we want our way. And she wants his way. And both of them are fighting for power. And guess what happens? Nobody gets their way. Nobody gets their way. If you are going to be yielded to God, you're going to have to be subject one to another. Honoring one another. Now, how do we do that, men? The Bible says, verse number eight, finally be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Men, you could use a little compassion, right? Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. When was the last time you opened your wife's door, men? When was the last time you opened up the door for her? When was the last time you let ha her have her way instead of your way? Just saying. Verse 9, not rendering evil for evil. She did that to me. I'm going to do it back to her. <laughs> or railing for railing. But contrary wise, blessing knowing ye are there unto called that ye should inherit a blessing for he that will love life and see good days <laughs> let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile man if you don't do that then you won't see good days all right if you love your life you'll keep your mouth shut the david version right there verse 11 <laughs> i heard a testimony there verse 11 let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the peace of the home, man, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> we are to respond in meekness. Why, why don't we get that today? The problem is, is we have too many husbands with pride. We have too many wives with pride. We want it our way. And he says, I want it my way. And we end up having friction in our marriages. And before long, you're going to have an earthquake in your marriage. The Lord wants us to be meek. Meekness will cause us to respond properly in difficult situations. It'll cause us to respond properly in our homes. I think that women want to be women just as much as men want to be men. Because she's the weaker vessel, she's to be treated with honor, men. The man is to give first place to her. And in doing so, we show honor and respect towards one another. A meek spirit in the home generates a spirit that is Christ-honoring. Mm -hmm. Hey, if the husband's being meek, the wife's being meek, the children then are seeing an example of a loving mom and dad that are meek towards each other. Guess what's going to happen? The kids are going to go, I'm going to be meek too. Why? We're all learning in honor to prefer one another. Amen? To prefer one another. 
Sometimes couples argue about the most piddly things in their marriages. One day there was a first grader named Melanie who announced to her mother that she was engaged to be married to the young gentleman next door. Her mother was surprised to hear this announcement but said nothing to her. The next day, Melanie informed her mother that the engagement was being called off. Why, her mother asked. Well, replied the child, he just isn't ready for a marriage commitment yet. And besides, he scribbled in my coloring book too. <laughs> and we laugh about that, but sometimes our marriages, our marriage arguments are just as piddly as that. What's wrong? What, why, why are you fighting in your marriage? Because he didn't put his socks in the hamper. There were two days of socks on the floor. I'm fed up with this. We're getting a divorce. Are you serious? We're getting a divorce because he can't put his socks in the hamper? And we get piddly like that, but oftentimes marriage divorces are about the most piddly things. And how can we have a proper marriage? Meekness. Meekness. The world is not encouraging that. But we see what the world's marriages are producing. Meekness, number three, will help us to respond properly in our witnessing as well. In our witnessing as well. Turn to 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15. You're there in chapter 3, so look at verse 15 with me. The Bible says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. Listen, if you're a soul winner today and you are telling people about Christ, we need to do it in a spirit of meekness. Here lately, uh, different men, I've been going out on Tuesday nights and then even on Sunday afternoons, to this El Cerrito area where our church is located at. And uh, uh, there's, there's been some times where they've talked with people and maybe they're, you know, they have, they have, they have uh, wealth, maybe they have, uh, you know, success. And, and, and so they feel like they don't need God, they don't need church. And, and oftentimes they'll just be very rude and, and, and just disrespectful sometimes when you're talking to them and encouraging them to come to church or, to know about Jesus Christ. And oftentimes we need to just back up and say, you know what? They're not mad at me. They're mad at God. And they need to deal with that, with their bitterness. But as a Christian, I need to respond with meekness. <laughs> I remember sometimes I, I'd be so angry and I, I would think it. I never said it, but I'd think it. But sometimes I'd be like, fine, go to hell then. <laughs> He said, Pastor, you thought that? You, 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 you were thinking that way? <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to tell them about how they could go to heaven yeah. someday, and they don't care. Yeah. And they're angry and mean at me. Right. He said, well, what's the alternative? Well, if you want to spend eternity in hell, you, you say, but Pastor, is that the right attitude? No, it's not. Lord, please forgive me. <laughs> but we need to respond in a spirit of meekness. Amen. We need to recognize that people, they have some rough situations. Maybe they're dealing with some difficult things in life. Maybe there's, the, the, there's some conflicts. Maybe there's some things that they're angry at God about. But we need to respond with the spirit of meekness. We must be meek when witnessing to the lost. Someone once said this, no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. You just show people that you love them, that you care for them, that you're concerned about their soul spending eternity in hell that you can't know for sure you're going to heaven. Just show them how much you care. And before long, they're going to go, wow, you do care about me. Tell me what you know about Christ. You know, we need to do that. Say, hey, some of you got family members like that. Don't talk about God to me one more time. <laughs> Please do not bring up church or the Bible or prayer, blah, blah, blah. And they, I, they probably treat you that way, right? And your carnal spirit, as you were just mocking pastor a second ago, fine then. In your mind, you may be thinking some mean or evil things. 
but we need to respond in a spirit of love and meekness as Jesus responded. Yeah. Lastly, revealing meekness, revealing meekness. Meekness will help us to show Christ living in us. Christ living in us. Now, Paul came to the churches in a spirit of meekness. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Let's hurry here. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 1. The Bible says, Now I beseech myself, uh, now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am base among you, but being absent am bold towards you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in readiness to receive all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Verse 7, do you look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ. Paul said in verse 1 that he came to them in meekness and gentleness. Now, was Paul, was Paul, excuse me, was Paul ever bold and harsh to some of the churches? A lot of times his preaching was. But you know what? The Bible says that he came with a spirit of meekness. You know, when we <coughs> come to church with the spirit of meekness and the preacher comes to the spirit of meekness, then guess what? We can take hard preaching. Right. And the pastor can give hard preaching yeah. because we realize this, that God loves us and that God's word is true and God wants us to do our best and when the preacher preaches something that you, I didn't like that, Pastor. Oh, Pastor, you just stepped on my toe right there. That hit me hard. You could take it because you recognize that the pastor in a spirit of meekness is preaching the word. Hey, maybe there was something preached today that you go, ooh, I didn't like that, Pastor. I did not like that. But I recognize that you love me today. Amen. And I recognize that you're preaching God's word. And because of that, in the spirit of meekness, I received it. If we have a church with members like that, with a pastor like that, woo, we can do great things for God, folks. Meekness will help us also to restore our brothers and sisters in Christ. In Galatians chapter 6, the Bible says that we can restore our brothers and sisters in Christ with a spirit of meekness. A spirit of meekness. Boy, sometimes when we try to help our brother and sister in Christ that have have fallen into sin, we do it in a spirit of pride. Well, I would never do that, but since you did, let me try to help you up. No, we need to recognize that at any day, you and I could be subject to the same sins. Right. But in a spirit of meekness, if we come and say, boy, I, I, I know you sinned, but you know what? Any of us could have. And in a spirit of meekness, you can help restore that brother and sister in Christ. Meekness also will help you to receive the word of God. James chapter 1, verse 21 and 22, I'll read it for you. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. When we have a spirit of meekness, every time you read God's word, you're gonna receive it. Hey, just like preaching, sometimes you read God's word and you go, oh, I didn't like that very much. Boy, I, I, I don't necessarily like what God's asking me to do. But in a spirit of meekness, you'll be able to receive God's word and do as God's asked you to do. Many times we can't handle that preaching. We can't handle the sermons. We can't handle reading the word of God because sometimes it corrects us. You know, the Bible is called the sword. It's a sword. The last time I checked, the sword hurts when it hits you. <laughs> it cuts. And sometimes when we read God's word and we hear God's word preached, sometimes we go, ooh, that hurt. 
but in a spirit of meekness. If we'll receive it, it can help us. Meekness will help us to also be able to enjoy this life much better. Hey, you want to, are, are you finding yourself not enjoying life lately? Then have a spirit of meekness and you'll start enjoying a little bit better. Turn to Isaiah 29 verse 19. Last verse here. Isaiah chapter 29 verse number 19. Sorry, it's a little long today. My wife wrote a long sermon. Sorry about it. She had a lot, lot to talk about after that ladies' conference. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 29, verse number 19. The Bible says, The meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord. The meek will increase their joy in the Lord. Hey, if you find yourself not enjoying life lately, then add a little meekness to it, amen? amen? When we are meek, we'll be happy with what God feeds us. We'll be happy with how God clothes us. We'll be happy with what God provides for us. <coughs> we were to go to Matthew chapter 6, we can see that God is concerned about us seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then he goes on to say all these things shall be added unto you. If we'll just seek God and his righteousness and do what he wants for our life in a spirit of meekness, guess what? We won't be concerned about what we're wearing. We won't be concerned about what we have or where we live or what car we drive. We'll just be with happy with what God has given us. Hey, let me ask you a question. Have you ever wondered why the largest, most majestic of the birds don't sing? Think about the eagle. And the hawk. Huh? They don't sing. They just... Ah! <laughs> or, like, you like my bird calls, huh? They just make a lot of noise. Or that crow in the morning time that wakes you up in the morning. Ah, ah, ah. I, I, can, I can train you guys how to do that after the service. They don't do anything but make noise. But the little birds, they sing the prettiest songs. I have a bird feeder in our side yard, and those songbirds come, and in the morning time, you just hear them chirping away, just singing songs. You know what that tells me? That you don't have to be a big bird <laughs> to make a sweet noise, just being a little one. You don't have to be someone big and important in order to sing praises to God. You just need to be small, meek, humble, that gives God all the praise, honor, and glory for the things that he's done. And you can be happy with life. You can be happy with wife. You can be happy with your job tomorrow. You can be happy with the clunker that you drive. You can be happy with the house you're living in. You can be happy with the clothes you wear. Ladies, you don't have to have a 16th pair of shoes. <laughs> you can be happy with all those things if you'll have a spirit of meekness. Let's pray. Yeah. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that you would give us a spirit of meekness.